Good evening, good morning, good night. Where are we watching this transmission? It is I, Mike Martins. Welcome for another Australian housing wrap-up. I want to bring this one out there. I want to put this one out there. Uh, we'll just wrap up the week of you know, what's happening in Australia. Don't forget to join me tomorrow night for trends in the housing market. I'll have the dates and times. So this is my uh, predictions, and I'm going to go over them once in a while. I have to, guys, because I need, I need people to know that I've been doing this for a long time. And not only that is... The problems I received from doing this, the amount of, of of lashing I took, you know, with other economists saying, oh, everything's fine, oh, everything's good, everything's fine, there's nothing wrong with the markets, it's just the way it is. And I was the one that was predicting, this is in 2015, Sydney, Vancouver housing crash, 47% by 2016. And uh, a lot of these videos were scrubbed from my channel. Um, Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, debt prison, too many people, and this was in on November 11th, 2015, and I was discussing this because this was a big deal at the time. And supply versus demand, illusion, oversupply coming in 2016, I was off by two years. I was off by almost three years because it was just too much supply going on to the market, uh, but uh, defeated the demand, but the people weren't counting in the empty, vacant um, homes that were owned by uh, investors in the hundreds of thousands of homes, and they weren't... Uh, discussing the pre-builds that still have to come a few years in time and uh, lots of videos somebody sent me another video of mine uh, that they have in full it's a 42 minute video and it, it, i discuss most of this sydney vancouver auckland london massive housing correction in the spring 2017 i was off like so horribly when it came to predicting this but i knew something was wrong big time when people are paying 20 30 times their income uh, 20, 30 times, 16 times a yearly income to buy a house. It's like 20 times. You'll never pay it off. And I, I'm, I'm a free and clear guy. I believe in free and clear. I own my house. My, my car's free and clear. My house is free and clear. I don't carry debt. Right? I do not carry any debt. Carrying debt is a plague. Um, if you need to spot someone alone for emergencies, a family, at least, you, you know, you, you could free up some some equity uh, not equity in the house i mean some cash savings it's easier when when all you have to pay is utilities and property tax right so home lending increases but further price plunge predicted lending to owner occupier grows by 3.4 percent in february as forecaster moody's predicts larger than expected drop in house values as by the guardian australian associated press lending to owner occupiers which is people jumping into their equity in their homes or any equity available in their homes and using that money to basically fund their consuming uh, we've become a, we've all become in the commonwealth has become a severely over consumable uh era we're living in it's a consumption era a throwaway era instead of fixing your tv like we did 20 years ago and find a park to fix it or send it out to get repaired and get it back two weeks later we are just buying a TV when it fails, and it's 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 taking a toll on 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 everything. It's taking a toll on our way of thinking, and the the consumerism is taking a toll on our um and this throwaway perception that we have in life is is changing our psyche. It's changing who we are and what we what we are what we're supposed to be on this planet. Anyways, agreement amongst economists that means for the health of Australia's housing market with. One forecaster tipping another 9.3% decline for Sydney property prices in 2019. Some economists express cautious about optimism that after the months of declines, markets could be finding a bottom. But CoreLogic Moody analyst predicts falls have a value uh, falls in value across Sydney and Melbourne will be worse than expected. Moody's had said in January that the house prices would only fall 3.3% across Sydney, but now it predicts 9.3%. So they're going to kind of keep retracting their statements so it kind of balances what the status quo is actually showing, right? Uh, and the decline is even much further, 11.4%, much greater than 6% predicted in January. Australian Bureau of Statistics figures that the release on Tuesday paint a different picture, though with the steady growth of new lending commitments to household, which rose 2.6% to $32.13 billion. I'm going to read that again. Steady growth of new lending commitments to households. So they own a house. They're taking their equity, which rose by 2.6% to $32.13 .13 billion in February, fueled by a 3.4% monthly rise in value of lending to owner-occupiers. It was the first month rise since uh, July of last year. So people are taking out to consume. 
I don't think they're taking out to open a new business. I, I mean, I'm very sure somebody's doing that, but I don't think so. The number of approvals excluding refinance rose 0.8%, beating the market predictions of a 0.5% increase. Uh, Rate City's research director Sa uh, Sally said an uptick could be an anomaly or an anomaly or might be evidence that the housing downturn was slowing. She also predicted Commonwealth's bank decision on Tuesday to cut the range of fixed rate home loans. They're going to have to. They're going to have to go interest only, and they're going to have to go into negative interest rate territory eventually. After a year of frugal lending practices, a year of frugal, a year, the last 10 years, it's been a, a, a huge poop show lending practices, uh, people not calculating proper TDSs, people not bringing in proper pay stubs, people lying about their income just to hit their numbers in the books. Give me a break. A year of frugal lending practice, a year? Some banks have realized that they need to hit more sustainable medium when it comes to home lending. Yeah, they're targets. You have more realistic targets to hit, not this bullcrap quarters that you want to hit these numbers and have to overcome last month or the regional manager will get fired or the district manager is on, 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 on the hook. And if he doesn't hit these numbers, guys, we're going to be all fired and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The banks are hungry to bolster their books through cooperative pricing. And yeah, that's what happened. Competitive pricing. It could be cooperative too. Why not? But with the value of total household lending still at 15.7% lower than the same time last year, others, uh, including the AB ABS chief economists, were more cautious about the outlook. The longer, the longer term story is largely unchanged with new lending to household remaining subdued and well down on levels seen over the past five years, he said. Uh, Westpac senior economist Matthew said, Tuesday's update with with firmer than expected, but signs of improvement were still tentative. Guys, everybody watching this in the Commonwealth, the banking system, the banking system is banking system confidence is less than ten percent in Australia after the uh, Royal Commission went in there and started ransacking things. They even got they even they didn't even scratch the surface. The Royal Commission. You get me in there with my Hawaiian shirt and my nice hat, and let me go through some of the, the files. I'll, I'll pull a list of names of their files, like of, their, of the mortgages, just basic mortgages. Never mind actual banking standard books. I'm talking about going to the next level to the branch. Walk into a branch. I'll, I want this mortgage file. I want this mortgage, this mortgage, this mortgage. I want five mortgage files on my desk. They bring me the five mortgage files. I look through them. I'm going to find that the dates, you're going to find expired IDs, you're going to find that dates don't match on some of the uh, documents. You're going to see that uh, that they probably used an old um, a, a, an old appraisal that didn't match. You're going to start seeing that uh, their TDS was out of whack. How did they approve this? Oh, he has a cash job on the side. It doesn't work like that. So there's going to be a lot of things where pay stubs don't match. And then I'll call employers to make sure that person works there. And be like, oh, he was let go three years ago. But this loan was done a year ago. There's a lot of things you'll find once you, you go through five random files and you see. The markets may be starting to find a base in terms of finance activity, but conditions remain weak overall, he said. CoreLogic figures show the clearance rate is up slightly 57.2% versus 50.9% the previous week in the third consecutive week where the clearance rate has held above 50 points. So this is not good. This is not good at all. Is it a buyer's market? No, because affordability levels are just not there. And it got to a point of disgustingness. Absolute disgustingness. It got to a point, I was watching this years ago, and I'm like... What is this? You know, that's why I follow Sydney, especially the Sydney Australian housing market so closely is because it's not normal. Oh, Mike, you've never been to Sydney. What do you know about Australia? Um, I could just look at numbers and I could tell you. I could tell you without even stepping foot. I li Hey, I live in Vancouver. It's the same thing. It's an empty city, soulless, and it's a city of broken dreams. And um, everybody hates each other. Everybody's... Uh, uh, unhappy. It's happening in every major city in every pretty much English uh, Commonwealth country. So you, you go to London, it's the same thing. You, you get 50 stabbings a night. You go over to, to Dublin right now with 13 or 12,000 homeless and 3,000 are children. You go to Edinburgh. You go to people uh, ransacking, not ransacking, but people going more to food donation and food shelters because of what's happening and stuff. 
There's a lot. You know, Australia is under this grid too. Uh, you know, they have a better wage in Australia. Minimum wage here, I think, is eleven dollars an hour in Vancouver, and the average the average home is still over a million bucks. I don't need to go to Australia to know. I don't need to go anywhere to know. All you could just see it. You could feel it. So housing prices to fall another 10% before 2020, rebound Moody's an analytics says. So another um, capital city house prices expe expected to fall 7.7% this year. Apartments 3, 4.3 points. Uh, price falls in Melbourne and Sydney and Perth expected to lead the national decline. So it's going to bring down the national level of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the country because those major cities have been propping it up, right? Uh, AB, well, minus Perth. ABS home lending uh, figures show the increase in both home owner, occupier, and investor borrowing in February. So here's the chart uh, weakness carrier carriers. So you got your um, movement, uh, move house values and movements in the forecast. Very simple here. Um, percentage change. So there it is. There's Sydney right there. And there it is from how many years is this thing? So it's 19, 20, 21. So this is okay. Oh, okay, here it is 17. Okay, then you got 18 in the negatives, then you got 19. So 17 was the year to sell right here. I mean, you could see it. Well, except Perth. Perth is somewhat, um, no, actually not Perth either. Wow. Wow. So 17 was the, was the well, except Perth for 17 is what I mean. Sorry. Uh, Brisbane was a big one for 17. And then 18, everything just started to go in the negative except Canberra and uh, Brisbane. And then 19... Uh, everything just started to go to the everything is just hitting the frying pan right now everything's fried we got a combo we got a big combo coming up for you guys and then now 2020 they're expecting even well they're expecting according to this some sort of a bounce back or something i don't know i don't believe it tighter lending and negative gearing risks we went over that of course with the uh stress testing and all this stuff it's happening all over uh, Australia's housing market contraction is worse than first thought. Australia's housing market contraction is worse than first thought, leaving the economy in what he called a desolate, a delicate situation. Sorry, desolate. It's desolate in those big cities, believe me. Boosts the need for faster infrastructure spending and even potential RBA rate cuts. Come on, prop it up. Print off more money. Prop it up. Uh, first time home buyer loans. Come on, bring them in. Interest only. Bring them in. Stress testing at negative rates. Let's stress test at negative rates. I think given the economy is now that the growth uh, imputes uh, uh, impetus comes forward in important, the current uh, cycling setting. I've never used some of these words in my life, so please bear with me. The ambition on infrastructure spending is in many sen in senses welcome. Oh, God, they want more investors to come into the market. It's, it is, guys... It is first buyers. Once, once first time home, first time home buyers can't get in the market, and you don't get that fresh blood, you can kiss your market goodbye. With the amount of uh, um, the amount of investors walking away, good luck. Slow down in Australia's property market won't dampen Chinese investor interest. Not only the market correction is happening in a fundamental strong economy, but the Chinese developers' established presence in Australia and Chinese people's favorable sentiment will ensure that the appeal of Australian property endures. So they're, and again, they're hoping to sell off to foreign investors. We've been talking about this for years. And that's it. we got a racist duck here. White Rose, supermarket force to remove racist chocolate Easter ducks. That's a racist chocolate. Anyways, I hope it doesn't get my video flagged. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd like to know if you're down under with um, builders, pre-builds still coming up on the market. Lots of pre-builds. Watch the video, guys, I did the other day. How there's a condo in Vancouver where they're not allowed to flip. They got to move in. They got They can't leave it empty either. So there's a condo in Vancouver where they pass a law. The builder passed a law that they can't flip the condo. So a lot of people sat on these luxurious multi-million dollar condos to be built. They started in, I think it was 2014, and they just finished this week, and they're not allowed to flip the condos. Wow. Link at the end of the video. Uh, sorry, link it right now around you. Check out the video. It should be there. Let me know what you guys think, and thanks for watching.